Thanks for watching and today's video is about what's the difference and the better option between hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. At Healthy Kidney Inc. here we try to do everything to support good kidney health so you can avoid dialysis. But sometimes depending on what your issue is, no matter what you do, you still may end up on dialysis. And even a lot of people find out in the very late stages that uh, they have like stage 5 kidney failure and they're going to need dialysis. So there's a lot of times there's just there's nothing you can do. And, Regardless of all efforts, you may end up on dialysis. And I can tell you from a person that did hemodialysis for two and a half years, it's definitely not the end of the world and you can have a good quality of life. Now I'm gonna discuss peritoneal and hemo. I did hemodialysis for two and a half years, so that's where my perspective comes from. And you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, peritoneal dialysis was still available. A lot of people did it, but it wasn't nearly the norm because it wasn't considered as effective as doing hemodialysis. Now, as decades go by, technology improves, and the research shows that peritoneal looks equally effective to hemodialysis, and it provides a lot of benefits. So I'm gonna go over hemodialysis. With hemodialysis, you have to go to a center um, that provides the dialysis services. Very few people do hemodialysis at home. Um, the cost, uh, how to set up the machines and everything, it's just a lot to do for one person. So most people go to a dialysis center. And you have to go to this dialysis center usually three days a week for three to four hours. When I began, I was running less time. I was running like three hours because I still had a little bit of kidney function left. But as time went on and I lost that remaining kidney function, I had to run four hours. And so you're in a chair for four hours. Now, in order to access your blood, they have to create something called a fistula. And that's generally what they prefer, what they're always pushing that surgery. And it's a connection between an artery and a vein because the artery pumps more blood, expanding the vein to allow for the dialysis needles. So you need this type of surgery. And I'll, I'll show you my um, fistula. Now mine is older, done with older technology. They don't look like this anymore. They even do them laparoscopically now. Uh, but that's mine. You can see it here. Okay, not, not, not pretty, not, not fun to have in your arm. Um, I have some loss of function in this hand. Um, not that you would notice, but I would notice. Like if I'm holding a box, it's this hand gets weak, um, gets uh, pins and needly. And you can see it's a very large cut, very large scar, very painful. And dialysis, hemodialysis needles are not small. They're pretty big. Uh, they're a pretty big needle and a, and a big gauge, meaning thick. So they have to puncture one side with the needle and the other side to take your blood out, clean it through the machine, and then put it back in. And so that's hemodialysis. Nowadays, the surgeries are much better, so don't expect something like this. This is, this is something from uh, 20 years ago in that area. So it's outdated technology. They don't use that anymore. Um, but you're still gonna have to get some type of surgery. You're still gonna have to get a fistula. And a lot of time, these fistulas, uh, they don't work. They collapse, they break down. You need multiple um, surgeries to have more fistulas put in. And so hemodialysis really isn't, um, really isn't the ideal uh, path to follow, in my opinion, especially after looking at the enormous amounts of research with peritoneal. Now you have to make your own decision on what's best for you. But if you do hemo, you have a less quality of life because you have to go somewhere for 12 hours a week, plus the travel time to there and back. And on hemodialysis days, you tend, most people, not everybody, tend to not feel that great. It's called dialysis hangover. You have fatigue, headache, uh, maybe, maybe not. It's, that's not for everyone. Um, and if you take care of yourself, you have less of those symptoms. Now, peritoneal dialysis, we are gonna put a video um, with someone who sent me here in the local area that's you know worked with us many times, a really great kidney warrior. He's on his uh, third time dialysis, so he was on hemo, transplant, hemo, um, the transplant failed, hemo again, hemodialysis and a transplant. Uh, the transplant eventually failed. This is the course of like, decades and uh now he's on peritoneal and he talks about how much better it is how great it is so with peritoneal you get a tube inserted into your peritoneum um in this area and you have a little machine at home that you run every day you do your dialysis at your own schedule and from what um what i hear from everyone and what i look at the research and what it says is that people have a better quality of life people also find it a lot more easier convenient there's a lot less pain involved. Unfortunately, getting stuck with two large dialysis needles, it hurts. Over time, you're going to get scar tissue and you're not really going to feel it, but yeah, it's, it's not comfortable. It hurts. Um, getting stuck with any big piece of metal is going to hurt. 
And so with peritoneal, you don't have to deal with that. It's really just tubes that you connect. And it's very easier, better lifestyle, um, more manageable. And now with technology, we know that both of them are the same. As long as you take care of yourself on peritoneal, peritoneal does require more self-care. Okay? It does require to be more involved in the process. It does put a lot of the responsibility on you as opposed to just showing up at the dialysis center and just having, you know, sitting in a chair and they do everything for you. So those are the major differences. Now, if you're at this stage and you're thinking about it, don't take just my opinion. I'm only one person's opinion. Go and talk to some multiple people who had, uh, who have dialysis, who are on dialysis or were, and both types, people have done peritoneal and people have done hemo. So you get all the opinions, you make the best decision for yourself. Because when you go to your doctor, they're just gonna tell you, oh, uh, go get the fistula. Or they might not even give you, a, a, give you an option. Because the way the system works is that, um, this is the way we may done things. Um, you know, I, I, if I send to my surgeon friend who gets to do the surgery, he refers people back to me for the, uh, you know, for nephrology patients. And that's, that's the way it works. And so you might not be getting what's ideally the best thing for you and that's why you have to go out there, get your own information and make the best decision, what's best for you, your lifestyle, your family, your quality of life, and, and what's going on with your health. So those are the differences between peritoneal, hemo. We're gonna put a video up on someone doing peritoneal and showing you the process. You can always find plenty of videos like this online and you can just get a little better perspective. And thanks for watching everybody. And if you're at those later stages where you need dialysis, there's still a lot of things you can do to help improve your quality of life and really live a, a good quality of life on dialysis. So it's not the end of the world. But of course, we wanna do everything we can to try to prevent that stage. But if not, it's not the end of the world. You can still live very well, very healthy, and a good, good quality of life. Thanks for watching everybody to your best kidney health. And like, subscribe, comment, and check out our other videos here on our channel. To your best kidney health, everybody.